So I call it attitude bleed. Mm -hmm. I don't, that's not an official term, but yeah. that's what I call it when I work with people because no matter what happens, that attitude is going to trickle down. Um, and so that's why from my perspective, from a personal coaching perspective, I just like, I want to get Brenda in a room and I want to figure out what's going on and I want to figure out how to level her up because the team's going to follow. Mm. But the first thing that I tell people is that it's not about fault or blame because assigning fault and assigning blame doesn't make progress towards resolution. So you're saying this isn't Brenda's fault? I'm saying it doesn't matter. I'm not going to punch Eric's microphone anymore. <laughs> Please don't. Please yes, don't. we've been thinking and dreaming about this for a long time. I'm so excited that it's finally yeah. kicking off. And so we it's got real to now. Today. It's real, right? Yeah. It's going to be so good. So, Hannah, tell all of the listeners, all three or four of them on this first episode, <laughs> uh, what can they expect from the Coach Effect? Yeah. So, basically, Adam here is a business coach along with many other things and a lot of other fields of expertise. Um, I, myself, am a conflict coach. My name's Hannah, if yeah. in case you didn't get that. Um, I work with people, individuals, and businesses on emotional intelligence, relationship skills, conflict resolution, all of that. Um, I, Hannah, hold on a second. How do I convince my wife that I'm <laughs> this expert of all things like you just... That was an amazing introduction. Let me tell you, Hannah is the be-all, end-all conflict coach. But not just that, girl. you got a future in like Instagram production because you. you've been putting together all of our socials for this Lead NWA, which yeah. is an exciting thing we'll talk about a little bit later. Yep. Um, but you've been putting it together for the coach effect. All those like really great visuals. I could use words that would try to make me sound younger, <laughs> but I don't know how to use those words. So um, I think we're just going to stay with, hey, what you've done for the show so far has been really cool. Thank you. And, uh, you know, it, it, in the words of uh, Wayne and Garth, I'm not worthy. <laughs> it's good, good stuff. So, Hannah, tell us about the guest that we have on board today. Yeah, our guest today is Eric Crouch. Hey, Eric. Hey, guys. How's it going? Good. How are you? Good, man. One of my good friends. I, I will go ahead and claim this guy. <laughs> yes. Yeah. He's a leader in the, in the workforce here in Northwest Arkansas. How long have you been where you're at now? Almost a decade now. Almost a decade. Almost a decade what, I, what I asked him that for is because we were going to say nine and a half years, but he was like, almost a decade. <laughs> almost a decade. And so I'm guessing almost it a decade. It sounds better, yeah. It does sound it better sounds now better. that we're there. It really does. Like, yeah. I totally believe in your credibility now. Yeah. And so... <laughs> That incredible. six months makes a big difference. You're so much more credible at almost a decade Absolutely. than you were at nine and a half and years. Almost a decade yeah. is literally just like nine years, seven months yeah. instead of nine years, six months. Right. Yep. And I think you might be there. Yeah. It's all. It's long enough to round up. It's exactly. Long exactly. That's my, exactly. That's my so, what exactly are you doing? What's your role? Tell us a little bit so, about it. I'm a senior account manager. Uh, Currently on the business side, I work in telecommunications. Um, I've been with the same company for that nine and a half, almost a nice. decade. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, started in the retail store, worked my way up into management and leadership, gained some experience on that end, and decided I wanted to work my way onto the business side. Amazing. So I've been doing that, um, been enjoying it, and Currently, I'm actually looking for some other options, so I'm out there searching. Different industry part. or same kind of thing? What are you thinking? Thinking of getting into out of sales if okay. I can. Yeah. Um, but with my leadership and being able to like pretty good people person, yeah. I've been wanting to get into Dude, more of the you're HR. Not giving yourself enough credit. All right, so you're I'm a not. people person. All right, so <laughs> I saw this, this guy out at Pinpoint a couple of Friday nights ago, and you were being <laughs> a people person, <laughs> friend. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, right. that's I'm just saying funny. you're not giving yourself right. enough credit. All right, let me backtrack this <laughs> a little bit. I'm good at what I do. I'm a people person, <laughs> yeah. and I want to do this with it. Yeah. Go. All right, so I'm looking for a new job. What I'm wanting to get into is out of sales. Um, my ideal situation with my leadership and my skills with people and being able to work with people is to go on the HR side. Nice. Um, employee relations or something on that line. Yeah. 
So pretty you could good. say that you have a pretty good understanding of uh, like how to build strong relationships with people and clients and all of those things. One hundred percent. Awesome. Yes. Love awesome. that. Well, we're going to share a story today that uh, for those of you just getting to know our podcast, this is going to be something that we've, we're doing a little different than any other podcast right here on the bridge. Uh, with the Coach Effect, we're going to bring prominent business professionals on each and every broadcast. We're going to get to know them and what they've contributed to their particular industry, where they want to go, what they want to do, just like we have with Eric today. But then we're going to read a true story that happened at work. We're going to try to stay within the profession or industry of the guests that we have. And today, we've got a real good one I think you're going to... uh, to like here, Eric. And then what we're going to do after I read the story, or maybe next time Hannah will read the story, we're just kind of... Uh, I've got a good one for next week. Oh, do you? Yeah, oh, I can't yeah, wait. Better. I can't wait. So, well, we've got a good one coming up next week, but today it's pretty good too. So, we're going to read this story, and again, this is a true story, folks. Uh, we're going to give Eric an opportunity to respond, Hannah to respond from that conflict coach point of view, and then I'll respond from a business coach point of view. And the whole point of this, Hannah, is really to let people know when you reach out to a coach, yeah, it shouldn't have the stigma of like reaching out to a therapist. Right. Kind of somebody you just chill, talk yeah. to, and converse with, right? Yeah. It's our job to get you where you want to go, and we don't have specific methods we're required to use yeah. to get you there. Yeah. Like We work with you to figure out what works for you. That's right. And we make it work. That's right. Make no mistake about it. There is a process that we use yeah. to get people from sure. where they're at to where they want to be. And so uh, we actually have um, uh, an episode of Doing Business Right with Dr. Brian Rea on this network that talks about what a good coach is and yeah. what a good coach isn't. And so I encourage you guys to go back and check that out. Eric, are you ready, brother? Let's do this. Have you I'm ever worked with in. a coach before? I have not. Okay. Well, you're going to kind of get some interesting feedback here, um, but I'm looking forward to getting your feedback, too. And so hopefully, Hannah or I, one, will say at least one thing maybe you didn't think about before. And so, <laughs> hey, multiple perspectives is the best way, right? Uh, that's it. That's it. So, Hannah. Yeah. Here's the coach effect. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. Let's here get we go. into it. Imagine this. Okay. A bustling cell phone store. So, if gosh. You tried to get into yeah, yeah. I wouldn't know <laughs> yeah. anything about that. You wouldn't that. know anything about that. Imagine. Open. What do you mean? A bustling imagine. cell phone store. The latest smartphones gleam under the bright lights. Upbeat music plays in the background, but there is a palpable tension in the air. Now, mm. I've been to the AT&T and Verizon stores uh, when the Apple drop, when the Apple iPhone drops, when the new Samsung drops. Mm-hmm. I have this really cool, like, Z Fold 5 that opens mm. up into a tablet, dude. I can't wait. I, I'm, gonna, I'm a believer <laughs> now. Yeah. I gotta get one. And so, I won't tell you who my uh, cell, cell phone salesman was, but he might be at this table. <laughs> and uh, that may be how I know him. So, anyway... Here we go. You, you've been there. You've seen the scene before. You've stood in that building. The supervisor, let's just call her Brenda for conversation's sake, okay? Brenda. The supervisor is a whirlwind of energy. She's constantly juggling customer calls, troubleshooting tech issues, and handling inventory. On the surface, she really does seem like a model employee always going the extra mile. But... I have a feeling, Hannah, in these stories, we're going to find a lot of big buts <laughs> yeah, right about here. Be a but. Yeah, Somewhere. big but. Very crucial but. but. That's right. A big fat crack right here. <laughs> but. <Ooh>. Be- <laughs> Escalated real quick. (laughs) That did. That got out of hurry. All right, let's bring it back down. <laughs> Beneath the veneer of competence, Brenda's team is silently crumbling. She's a micromanager, second-guessing every decision and rarely offering praise. She's quick to criticize mistakes, but slow to acknowledge successes. Her my-way-or-the-highway approach has created a culture of fear and resentment. Employees are walking on eggshells, afraid to ask questions or offer suggestions. Customer complaints are rising. Employee turnover is soaring. And the once vibrant store atmosphere has become toxic. So, Eric, uh, I'm sure that you've encountered your fair share of challenging leadership situations in your career. 
But this scenario is something, man. You've got a leader that just from the outside looking in, seems like mm-hmm. they've got everything taken care of. The, the optics are good, but the team is falling apart, man. Does this ring any bells in your situation or experience? Yeah, uh, this isn't exactly, but it's close, and it does give me some ideas and some previous stories that I will be sharing. Uh, it's kind of like that thing. It's a... Uh, on the outside, when you look at the house, everything looks clean, yeah. picture perfect. But when you walk in and actually get to see what's going on, things are not that great, right? Well, it's totally, and that's the truth, yeah. too. You mentioned that you may be looking for other opportunities coming up soon, yeah. right? And so, like, to me, when I'm looking for a job and applying for a job, it seems a little scary that, yeah. like, they're putting their best foot forward, and sometimes they still suck. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. It's like, yeah. man, like at what point do you recognize, boy, this is toxic or this is genuine? I don't know. What are some things you look for as you kind of put your feelers out there? Yeah, so just for an example, as an assistant manager in a retail store that I was in, the GM, the general manager, um, just kind of the same situation, not so much on the micromanaging side, but more so on the... Seemed like he had it all together, but didn't have that morale or that push or that drive that the team needed for mm-hmm. that store to be successful. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was a matter of one incident happened, but that one incident allowed someone to come in, kind of ask questions with our team, see what was going on, and kind of take things from there to make sure things could move forward the right way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All so right. That, all was, right. that was the best. So thing. there was kind of one incident that compounded or the one incident that led to resolution one incident kind of led to well it's compounded yeah. multiple things i think happened yeah and this one final thing that kind of pushed everything pushed everything over the edge i got gotcha. you that limit so yeah that makes um, sense i think that happens a lot yeah yeah so then you've experienced i've experienced it a, a little bit right a little bit yeah uh, it's it's frustrating when you've got someone who especially someone who will like take credit for the work that you did or something like that just because uh, they don't want to share recognition or something. And so, uh, yeah, it, it's a tough situation. So if you're the supervising manager for Brenda right, and you're, I guess, a, a manager at a regional type setting or mm-hmm. district type setting and you're looking into this store... With your experience, what are some things you're going to prescribe for Brenda or maybe some of the other associates at the store? I, first thing that I would do would probably just show up as just a, a visit, like be in the area. Maybe not say I'm coming for that store only, but just mm-hmm. I'm coming to the area, right? Mm-hmm. I want to come see with how things are going. Yeah. Um, just get a little firsthand experience and see what is going on. Um, and in that time frame, maybe talk to the reps casually don't yeah. pull them aside because that's not a way to gain like trust because especially in a retail store people are close yeah they don't want to turn on each other you're not trying it's like to a little this. family no one's yeah, a narc you don't want to <laughs> exactly you're not trying to turn this into any kind of like uh like conflict resolution like i'm behind the desk and i'm gonna right. drill you for it's not supposed to be an us versus no, them type not. of thing even, yeah. i was thinking even worse an inquisition right, right. Exactly. tell us what we need to know yeah no, exactly so, thank you exactly and, and it's hey i'm coming to all the stores i'm just kind of getting a vibe wanting to see what's going on yeah what's your take what's going on um how are things going and have a list of things that i want to talk about but have right it conversational with them maybe in a group setting yeah so they don't feel threatened right, exactly. yeah um but make sure it's also at a point where i don't have management or that leadership around so they are able to speak more freely right so, yeah um that that's the take that you would start at yeah mm, okay. and then so no, once you yeah. get that feedback, obviously, like that's, I think what you're getting at is that you're leading into accountability. Someone's yeah. going to have to hold someone accountable. 100%. Um, and so once you get that feedback, do you have an idea of kind of how you would approach Brenda or would you? I think at that point, it depends, you know, I yeah. mean, if we're at a point where she has not had conversation yeah. and it's, hey, we've seen things look good, but obviously things aren't. Right. And... I think it would be only fair to have that first conversation. Hey, Brenda, I was here. This is the feedback that I've gotten. Yeah. Um, here are some ways that I think we could do better. Yeah. Let's coach each other. We'll check in, do check-ins like once a week. Yeah. If you have to, mm-hmm. but just get you back on path. Is that sound right. like something you would like to do? And then start like an action plan for it. Yeah. Not like that mm-hmm. they're in trouble, but an action plan to get them to change yeah. that avenue or that toxic 
environment that's right so in that for. senior management position you are kind of part of your job is coaching the people below you're even an hr position in like HR, yeah that yeah. would be part of what you're expected to do yes, day to day 100%. Hannah, I'm, I'm curious, from a conflict resolution perspective, yeah. this situation seems ripe for implosion. Yeah. Uh, nobody's thrown a chair yet, right? right? Nobody's <laughs> thrown a punch, we don't yeah. think. No holes in walls. All right. Yeah. So how does a toxic work environment impact employee morale and customer satisfaction? Yeah. So. Oh, okay. I was getting ready to argue. That's yeah. good. Tell me why it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because in relationships that matter to you and relationships that you can't get out of, for example, boss and inferior mm. employee, whatever yeah. that hierarchy looks yeah. like, right? Anytime there's a power difference or it's a relationship where there's some it's someone you really care about, so mm. that relationship matters to you, then the goal is to get closer and closer to resolution. So everything we do and every action we take and every mindset we have, every attitude we express needs to be something that brings us closer to resolution. Mm. And figuring out whose fault it is doesn't bring you closer to resolution. People think it does because it gives us a false sense of security. We feel like we're figuring it out. Mm -hmm. But assigning fault and blame doesn't help you figure out what's actually wrong. Wow. It just makes you mad. That's why we pay her the big money, folks. That's <laughs> why yes, we pay her the big money. Gold. So <laughs> clearly, Brenda could be doing more. She's yeah. got the outward appearances right. But it her, might be Brenda's fault, it but it be. doesn't matter. It might be. And there might be things you never know because we all have stuff that goes on. Right. Like, there right. might be things. So it's really diving in and seeing what's, well, what is it. She might not even know right. that's what's the problem. Absolutely. And that's why I mean when I say I want to really figure out what's going on because a lot of times micromanaging comes from insecurity. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean like she's nervous about what she's wearing that day. Maybe there's pressure coming from people above her. Maybe mm -hmm. she doesn't see the success that she's brought. Maybe she only sees the bad things and is nervous that her job is at risk. You don't actually know what's going on. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean she's handling it the right way. Mm -hmm. But if we can address what's actually going on with Brenda at work, mm -hmm. then that solves our main issue right there. It's starting at the root is really True. what it is. True. Right. So so let's shift perspective. Then, yeah. Okay. okay. Eric, I'll put you in this circumstance first and then I'll ask Hannah. Right. Okay. Let's go ahead and shift the perspective that now you're on Brenda's team. Brenda's your supervisor that you report to. As someone who reports to someone that seems to not be the best leader, right? There seems to almost be a leadership void mm -hmm. in this situation. What, what is something you think you could do to try to lead up a little bit or influence your supervisor to see things a little differently? Yeah. Um, first thing that I would do is really just have a talk with her. You know, as a leader, we should already be doing monthly check-ins, like monthly one-on-ones anyway, mm -hmm. um, not just professionally, but just to get to know what's going on. Hey, do you have anything going on that's could influence your work life. Like, mm -hmm. is there something? So it's more about being a person with them than mm -hmm. just being a boss. Like, you're a leader, not a boss. I know that's yeah. so cliche to yeah. say, yeah. but, but it no, is from, so true. From the employee side, too, I mean, my advice would be the same. Treat your boss like a person. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, treat yeah. them with respect. They mm -hmm. are your leader. You are at work. So all yeah. those things are important. But I, I tell people all the time, people say match energies. Like, I'm just going to match your energy. If you act like that towards me, I'm going to act like that towards you. Mm -hmm. And I get that. That is a natural response. But when we're at work and something we don't have good leadership or something's going on with our boss and we can't figure it out, really, everyone should be matching the energy of the person who's the calmest and most collected. And mm -hmm. that's what leads towards progress because you don't fight fire with fire, right? Dude, but if you put water in water, it's just water. Just so taking notes. Gosh. So really, what needs to happen is you still need to be able to approach the situation in a positive, respectful way mm -hmm. instead of matching the energy that your boss mm -hmm. is giving you, which, I mean, for a lot of people will translate as being the bigger person and they don't want to do that. But in an environment where you can't escape that power dynamic, that is the way to shift their attitude. Mm -hmm. Because what's going to happen is they're going to realize that you're not feeding off of them and you're doing everything you can and you're still stable and you're still good. And that's going to help them recognize their imbalance because mm -hmm. they're going to see you acting differently. Yeah, yeah. So... Hannah, conflict coach. Yeah. Can these relationships be salvaged or is it best just to uh, get Brenda out and start again? Relationships can be salvaged. 
Um, I think those are two separate questions Mm -hmm. because relationships can absolutely be salvaged. And if Brenda's willing to do the work, it needs to become a better manager and a better leader. And her employees are willing to give her the opportunity to make that progress. Great. We're working our way up. That's good. Everyone's done what they're required to do to be good in their position and to make sure the team is functioning well. But if you're asking me what's best professionally, it a hundred percent depends on Brenda. Yeah. Is she willing to make the changes or does she need to go? Mm. So those are two separate questions, I think. Mm. Okay. Okay, Adam. So assuming that this is a like issue, a reoccurring issue that's happened multiple times, this Brenda isn't the only one that they've promoted that's not prepared. Let's run with that for a second. Because okay. I feel like based on what we know, that's seeming to be the issue. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's talk about what... To, in order to create a healthy workplace culture, right? This feels like a culture issue a sure little does. bit. Yeah. So what are some steps that leaders can take or even that employees can take in order to make sure that there is a culture that's fostered, that is positive and supportive and high performing? Because that's yeah. important too. Absolutely. Well, I think first and foremost, you, you've got to set the leadership structure in place, right? Mm-hmm. And so that's uh, mission, shared mission, vision, and values. I was consulting yeah. with a company last week, and I said, I looked all over your website for your mission and vision. Where yeah. is it? And they were like, well, the boss hasn't published those yet. Oh I was gosh. like, so he's creating it all himself? Yeah. And they were like, yeah, he is, and uh, he lets us look at it every now and then, but sometimes they change. And I'm like, okay, so wow. clearly y'all need to go through some sort of shared mission, vision, right, and yeah. uh, shared values type of thing, right? Right. Um, once the leadership understands what page they're supposed to be on, then we can begin to cast vision down into some of these subordinate roles yeah. like uh, location manager or something like that. And one of the first things I think Brenda needs – uh, assuming the best about Brenda, yeah, right? Now, right. you may have a Brenda, and if you do, <laughs> fill up the comments and tell us your best Brenda stories yeah. today. That's what we're going to ask you to do. Tell us about your Brenda. We yeah. all have a Brenda. We all have we a all Brenda, have right? I mean, the term Karen got coined because we all had a Karen, yeah, too. I was exactly. about to say the yeah. same thing. I won. I was like, how can I throw in the Karen thing? Here yeah, the I mean, so. it just works. I'm, a, I'm just a motor mouth and didn't shut up yeah. to let you have it. And so, But you've got a Brenda. Assuming the best about Brenda, let's let's go ahead and equip her with a great piece of information that most of us miss, and that is just this. We have to define the win for Brenda. Mm. She's got to know what it's going to take that day to to score a win between her w- with her new role, with her employees, what are benchmarks she needs to yeah. set? If she uh, she's going to need to be told, hey, go and make sure out of five subordinates, you have one conversation with all five today right. for at least a minute or so, and make it conversational. We've got to literally break it down because Brenda's a doer. Yeah. She works hard, and people know that she works hard, and so. It's not in her to break and go have conversations. Hannah, you and I, yeah. we can have conversations all day long. Eric, I've yeah. seen you, buddy. I can talk. We can talk. I can talk. Yeah. We got that. I'm like, we're going to talk about this right now. I don't now. think Brenda's got that. <laughs> yeah. So once Brenda knows the win and she has the win explained to her, then Brenda can now forecast the win for her team. Right. And they can learn how to impress her, how to score points, how to communicate, but better yet, she is going to learn yeah. how to lead her team. Yeah. And that's incredible. You know, right. um, when my wife and I first met, I asked her to take the love language assessment. Yeah. I asked you to take it too, yeah. right? Because all of my great oh, yeah. friends. I'm when like, you work closely with someone, it's important to know. Right. Yeah. And so in order for Brenda to lead or in order for, let me put it this way, in order for Brenda's team to follow Brenda's leadership. Mm. They've got to know how to follow her. It's a new term called followership. And there's, Mm. there's all sorts of research articles being written about it right now and the importance of effective followership to exemplify quality leadership. Right. And so that I, there are so many things we could do, yeah. but I think from first and foremost, when we're creating this issue, and then Hannah, I want you to kind of touch on the relationship aspect, yeah, because I focus specifically on the leadership aspect. Brenda needs to be armed with the win mm-hmm. and told how to succeed. Yeah. And then Brenda needs to communicate the win to her team so yeah. that both sides can learn how to work together. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. No, I agree 100%. And that 
feels parallel with one of the things I coach people on all the time, which is how are we supposed to know what to do Mm. if we've never been taught how to do it or seen it done? Preach. You can't pull knowledge and information out of nowhere. Yeah. So if Brenda's not been adequately trained, if she doesn't have the information she needs, for example, what the win is, what is your daily goal, what are things you need to be doing every day, of course she's running around like a chicken with her head cut off. Yeah. She has no information that's going to help her. She's a doer in the things she knows how to do. Yeah. Yeah. In her mind, she's successful because she's literally doing everything she can think mm-hmm. of but no one's saying here's what you need to do to be successful well and in that situation brenda could be stepping on the toes of her uh employees her direct reports and otherwise because as a doer she's going to do 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 yeah fast as that's she true can. Yeah. she might be doing work that other people need to do in yeah. order to shine or show their right. best and or so- to have information if she's doing other mm-hmm. people's work they may not have the information they need to do other parts mm-hmm. of their job so it really does compound when there's poor leadership even yeah. it doesn't matter whose fault it is yeah. it just compounds when there's poor leadership so, yeah. true. so Eric, <laughs> in, just in Oops. case brenda is a tyrant. Yeah. She knows how to lead. She knows the right thing to do. She just knows that if the right eyes aren't looking, she really doesn't have to. Right. Mm. right? So that's what I would call a tyrant. What's the difference between hiring a leader versus hiring a tyrant? Because I would also say that sometimes those two shoes are very similar to walk in. Yeah. So people can be both too. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, there that's there a fine line, right? Like, right. Are you? right. But no, I really. What it comes down to is really the self-accountability piece um, in the person you're going to hire. If if you're going to be a leader, you have to be Mm self-accountable. There's no doubt about that. So it starts there. And then from there, it's how you react and how you interact with the people you were leading. Mm. Um, So it's about going out there and doing the work with them. Just because I'm the manager doesn't mean I'm not going to be out there with them selling. Mm. Right. I'm, That's good, man. That impacts me just as much as them. So I'm going to be with them every step of the way. Right, mm-hmm. right. Because even if you're not in a position to go do their job, you know, like you said, and in a lot of places you can be the manager and still help your employees mm-hmm. or your reps or whoever yeah. it is. But in some places you can't. You're instructed to sit in your office and do this and do that or whatever. But there's still ways you can create a team mentality Mm -hmm. even as the leader because i don't think the leader is supposed to be only the coach of the team if we're running with that team Mm -hmm. analogy right Mm -hmm. i think a leader is supposed to be part of the team almost like the team captain um especially if there are then more people above that leader Mm -hmm. who are in charge of that thing but kind of like you were saying i think a big piece of that is if brenda has all the skills and all the abilities and everything like that and is refusing to do it or is a terrible person or whatever, Mm -hmm. really the difference would be the difference between a strong leader and just a strong personality. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of leaders who are doing the hiring will get someone who makes an impact in an interview and be like, that's a good leader. Awesome. That doesn't yeah. equate. That's yeah. not the same thing. So you need to really be able to assess the skills and the strengths, learn about their histories, learn about their experiences, figure out who that person is and whether or not they have the qualities that make them a good leader. All right. Well, we started out laughing, but things got pretty serious pretty quick here. Hey, I, I like it, though. Hey. That was a lot of good discussions. Yeah, Congratulations no, that's good. on episode one of The Coach Oh, I'm Effect, so excited. Right? This was so fun. It was so fun. I've been so nervous and excited to I get know. this started with good you. Good nervous. Good and nervous. Eric, great surprise. So what you hey. may not know, Eric found out about... 49 minutes before we were going to yeah. record that uh, we needed him to jump in. We, we are going to have uh, our previously scheduled guest on at a later time. But Eric, man, I don't think this could have went better for a this first awesome. episode, dude. Uh, I am super glad that I was here for the first episode. Yeah, yeah. you have That's a lot of really I'm good liking. expertise. I really encourage you to share more of what you know with I people. I appreciate that. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, much. Awesome. so, Hannah, let's take the last few minutes, and I'm going to give you the floor since you've done more of the Instagram work for it. <laughs> yeah. um, why don't you go ahead... This this is a very deliberate podcast that yeah. we're doing because we have an exciting announcement about a new uh, event yes. opportunity that we're going to work on together. And I'm yes. going to let you make the announcement. Awesome. So we have a leadership mini conference coming up in Northwest Arkansas. This is the first conference of its kind in the area and that I know of at all. Um, it's only four hours in the morning on a Tuesday, so it's really easy to fit it into your week. 
Um, it's going to be locally here in Northwest Arkansas, ideally in Fayetteville. Mm -hmm. We're going to have, uh, I'm going to do a talk on change and change mm -hmm. being a process. Adam's going to speak from a business coach perspective um, on the same topic. And then we're going to have a panel discussion of a lot of local entrepreneurs, business professionals, talking about that topic and what it takes to really make positive change in your industry, in your life, in your business, in your organization. Um, and we're going to really cover those things. And it's going to be a lot of really amazing amazing information in a short amount of time um, and it's coming up in September I think yeah. September 10th is what we're shooting for yeah. so yeah don't I'm hold very to that excited just yet. it depends on the, it you definitely know, the depends. speaker that we get booked and all that yes. stuff but we're definitely looking at the beginning of September as a launch pad for it and what I love about this is we're going with a mini conference environment so that you can come in we'll do open networking from 8 to 9 and then from 9 to 11 30 or so we'll have our event and then you can spend the rest of the afternoon with your team at a park, there at the event site if you want, or just somewhere where you guys can reflect, you can talk, you can get to know each other a little bit better, begin to challenge each other with the concepts that you're going to receive Absolutely. at this first event. Now the event in September, we're looking at being on coaching and the value of coaching, uh, but we're looking at January of 25, doing mm -hmm. our first women's conference. Yes, we're gonna put uh, together a whole women's conference. Yeah. We're not sure yet if we're gonna do a full conference or mini conference style, yeah. but I really like the mini conference, so assuming that goes the way we think it's going, Going to, I really like running with that. I think so. it'd be great too. And then we're looking at a men's conference in April of 25, and then hopefully an LGBTQ plus conference in uh, June of 25 to go along with the Pride Month festivities. Yes. And so, happy Pride, by yeah, the way. Yes. <laughs> yes. Happy Pride, everyone. Happy Pride, everyone. Our, our goal is that each and every one of us that are in leadership would want to go to an event where we can see someone that resembles us, either what we believe in, what we're about, yes. what we stand for, talking about leadership and going and, and developing ourselves as business professionals. And so... I know every time I see a fat bald guy on the stage, <laughs> I get really happy. And so uh, I, I know that when you see a woman or you see some dapper looking like guy pull up in a sports car or something, you're like, yep, yeah, that's Listen, that's. I love going to women's conferences because I just feel like I can connect so well with the people around me. Mm -hmm. Same with like leadership business conferences though, because they're, those are people with similar goals, like oh, yeah. aligned visions, wanting to make something, wanting to make a difference, wanting to do something important. So. Yeah. It's a really good way to network and make new connections and also just feel like you're surrounded by people who think the same way you do. Mm -hmm. So, as any good coach would do, we're going to give you some homework and say that now the ball's in your court. You need to share this episode and as you do, go ahead and share your Brenda with us yes. because we would love to hear about the Brenda you're dealing with or have dealt with and if you can't think of a Brenda, Maybe you're Brenda, <laughs> and you might want to look around your situation a little bit. Just Ooh. saying. Uh, yeah, that, that's, that's, what you, that's a real. Today. That's what you call bringing the heat. Yeah, Bring it on. Close exactly. The show. Exactly. Hannah, do you have anything you want to say before we close? Yeah, if you are or know a business professional or an organizational professional in the area, and you want to be on the podcast, and you want to share your expertise and talk about your business and what you're doing, we are always looking for new guests. Mm -hmm. We love having these conversations, and if you. You've had a crazy story let us know we'd love to talk about it we as anonymously share, as you want absolutely we can share yeah. your story yeah. in here um i mean there are a lot out on the internet but yeah. how cool is it going to be when we say this is a true story this from happened. someone right here exactly it happened Valley here in northwest arkansas absolutely Perfect. eric thanks so much for coming dude no, i appreciate it, it you fun. were so much fun on this journey this is a blast yeah and all i can say to anyone that has never done one and thinks they're uncomfortable just Step in and do it. Just do yeah, it. Good time. Yeah. Just do so, it. Just do it's it. It's kind of an easy format yeah. too, right? I mean, yeah, we, it's we, not live. No, it's not live. <laughs> it's not live. It's We're good. Not live. And after a few seconds, you don't even remember the the camera or the yeah. microphone board back here We're or just anything talking. else. And so, that or um, eight or nine calls from your kids. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> true. Uh, follow us on Instagram if you want to know when new episodes are coming out. Um, Instagram and Facebook. The handle is the Coach Effect Pod. No periods. No underscores. No nothing. Um, follow us. We'll be posting clips from existing episodes as we do them mm -hmm. and information about new episodes that are coming so make sure you follow along yeah i'm so excited to get finished so i can go cut some clips i, know. I mean it's just gonna, it's gonna look so great um also don't forget to follow the bridge on youtube and that's 
at the bridge NWA, and that's going to show you the 300 or so videos that we've had uh, been putting online since May of 23. We get more stories put up every day, and go ahead and give us a subscribe on that too, because we have some monetization goals that we're working toward, and you can help us bring that to fruition. So, awesome. On behalf of your conflict coach, <laughs> Hannah Hutchinson, and our business uh, and professional account manager. account manager, senior sales account manager. It changes every time we try to say it. <laughs> All right. Eric Crouch. Yes, I am here, the one and only. Hey, I would just like to thank everyone uh -huh. real quick yeah. for me being me. That's all. Oh, I'm just I love kidding. That. I'm just I love kidding. That. You just should say because I love me some me. Yeah, right? no, I love Sarah that. Owens quote. Yeah. Yeah, I love me some me. I do too. Well, my name's Adam Robinson. This has been the Coach Effect. We'll see you next time. Bye.